The World Health Organization declared smallpox a contagious and sometimes fatal infectious disease. The disease itself was eradicated in the 1980s thanks to a serious and widespread vaccine campaign. So that begs the question, why would the FDA approve a new treatment for smallpox as of late? The answer lies in bioterrorism. Let's take a deeper look at this with a differential now. I'm Neil Bobster and let's get to it. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has approved Tecaravirumat, the first drug with an indication for treatment of smallpox. The agency announced this today. The effectiveness of Tecaravirumat against smallpox was shown in studies of animals infected with the virus closely related to the variola virus. More animals treated with Tecaravirumat lived than did animals treated with the placebo. Smallpox is caused by the variola virus. The virus spreads by direct contact between people. Symptoms begin 10 to 14 days after an infection and includes fever, exhaustion, headache, and backache. A rash initially consisting of small pink bumps progresses to pus-filled sores before finally crusting over and scarring. Complications of smallpox may include encephalitis, corneal ulcerations, and even blindness. So I think we can all be a little glad that the vaccine campaign in the 1980s officially eradicated smallpox globally. The FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb, MD, said in a news release that to address the risk of bioterrorism, Congress has taken steps to enable the, the development and approval of countermeasures to thwart pathogens that could be employed as weapons. Today's approval provides an important milestone in these efforts. This new treatment affords us an additional option should smallpox ever be used as a bioweapon. Don't worry, there are only two labs in the world that officially carry the smallpox virus for research. The first is the Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the U.S., as you might have heard of. And the second is the Russian State Center for Research on Virology and Biotechnology in the Russian Federation. Officials do have reason to believe, though, that in the past, certain countries may have used the virus as a weapon, which may fall into the hands of terrorists, of those with malintent, directing the FDA to approve a drug that would prevent smallpox from progressing in an individual. All right, but let's say that smallpox does become a problem. What happens next? In the event that we have a patient zero with smallpox, the CDC has guidelines prepared so that local public health authorities can streamline public health alerts from local to state to federal level in a very quick turnaround. If smallpox is confirmed, then the CDC will put in place their bioterrorist response plan to counter smallpox effectively. So, how do you feel about Tecavir, Matt? Do you think that the virus utilized as a weapon might be a legitimate concern in our time? Do you think that this drug that the FDA just approved was something that we needed? Leave your comment below. Again, definitely check out Medscape Medical Students for more information on medical student news, resources, and references. Follow us on social media for live updates. Thanks again for tuning in. This is Neil Bobsar with The Differential Now. See you next time.